Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to do a walkthrough of a very old and classic Disney game called Disney's Aladdin, released in the year 1992. And I will run it on my Mac using this software called DOSBox, it's a very nice MS-DOS emulator. I'm going to quickly show you guys how to run uh, DOSBox on a Mac in case you're wondering. Uh, you need to mount your home directory, which is usually C, I think you can use any letter for this. Uh, then navigate to C, it's a bit different from uh, the way Windows does it and uh, navigate to the folder where you have Aladdin stored. And before I actually start running Aladdin, I'm going to press Control shift f12, which will increase, oops, sorry, there, uh, which will increase the number of uh, cycles which DOSBox is executing. You can see this figure going up as I do that. Uh, increase it to something like uh, anything more than 10,000 cycles is good. And press Alt Enter to make this full screen. Right, so once all that is done, let's go ahead and start Disney's Aladdin. I do not have the sound in this version, uh, sorry about that. But apart from that, the game is complete in every respect. Alright, so let's go to options and quickly uh, redefine the keys which I like. X for slash, C for throwing apples, and Z for jump. I play in normal difficulty. Alright, so let's start the game. There are 11 levels in this game, and I'm not going to show you the story and all that, just mainly focus on the gameplay. Uh, you can run, left and right, jump, slash, and throw apples. Those are the basic moves. You can also duck, by the way, and look up, which is almost never used. Uh, the genie face on the top left of the screen shows me my health, how happy he is. And you can also see my score. Uh, which can be a maximum of five digits. So once that score reaches nine 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 zero, it doesn't increase beyond that. Oops. Also, uh, as far as collectibles are concerned, you have apples which I can throw. Oops. Okay, not a great start. Apples are things which I can throw to kill enemies. Uh, apart from that. Diamonds help me to buy lives and game continuations, uh, which are called wishes. So if I lose all my lives in a particular level, but I have a wish, then I can uh, restart from the beginning of that level. And also, I can collect big uh, genie faces, like this one over here, which give me additional chances in a small bonus which I have at the end of each level. And hearts give me health. Uh, these things are restarting points, these smiling genie faces. Right, so that's about it. So let's get this guy using some apples. Uh, the game kind of follows the movie Disney's Aladdin, not uh, very closely. Uh, but the levels up to level 7, Rug Ride, do follow the movie pretty closely. Okay, so far so good. There's another restarting point, and there's some health. These black lamps will kill every enemy on sight. Uh, I personally do not find them very useful, because in the places where you have black lamps, you don't have too many enemies, and generally I end up killing just one of them using the black lamp. Right, so there's a big jump here, which, yes, okay. So this jump gives me four extra, no, I think three extra diamonds, yep. Yeah. And there's this uh, special thing in levels 1 and 5, that face of Abu, who is my pet monkey. Uh, if I get that face, that leads me to a bonus level at the end. Alright, so here's a shopkeeper. Uh, let's buy a couple of lives from him. Since we have uh, 10 diamonds, you'll notice that my life count just went up from 2 to 4. And that's the end of level 1. Level complete. So this is the small bonus, and the number of chances I have depends on the number of GD faces. I did pretty well there, I think. Got a couple of lives. And this is the main bonus level, Abu in Agrabah. So in this bonus level, one hit ends the bonus. So as long as you can dodge all the pots and everything else that is thrown at you, uh, the bonus keeps going on. 
And you can earn diamonds and lots of uh, pretty cool stuff from Despawners. Also lives. Uh, you can see uh, a life just poking its chin from the top of the screen. Oh shit. Alright, so we got four diamonds. Nice try. Level 2, the desert. I need to find three pieces of the scarab. Uh, after starting this level and going right, go all the way back to the left and get that life. Uh, your apples can be a maximum of 99, so I'm not really bothering about collecting all the apples. And these camels are pretty useful, as you can see. And what is this? How oh, nice. I think those taunts down below are deadly, like uh, insta kills, so I'm not going to take any chances. And tells me to stop. Uh, this is not exactly a speed run, although I will try to play the game pretty fast and also try to not lose any lives in the process. But uh, it's more like a. It's more on the lines of a let's play, not exactly a speed run. So if I go down here, there are some extra points to be had. Black lamp, kill that guy, just the one guy. Ouch. I do have a lot of diamonds, so I'll probably buy a wish from the next uh, shopkeeper which I come across. This part can be tricky. And you can see that the genie's face is not looking too good. But uh, this thing here is the first third of the first half of the scarab. So I guess you could call it the first sixth. Uh, there's a shopkeeper here, but unfortunately I have 19 diamonds. So I'll sell for just a couple of lives. No wish. Oh wait. Wait, I did have 20. I think I just got a diamond as I went up there. Alright, so I'm maxed out on lives right now. Uh, it's similar to a cat. I can get 9 lives. And I'm almost dead, as you can see. That is another part of the scarab. And now let's just try to finish this level without losing this life. And there we go. Three parts of the scarab, level complete. No luck on the bonus this time. And we come to what is actually a pretty hard level in terms of uh, losing health. So later on the levels will focus more on uh, trying to kill you through falling down, but uh, this level focuses on trying to kill you uh, by making you lose uh, lots of health. Uh, you have those small snakes and a bunch of guards and people throwing pots from windows, so all sorts of way to die, and these weird uh, bug creatures I guess. But anyway, we on the lookout for flutes, flutes activate those ropes which you can see just appearing uh, magically in front of the pots. And any pot which does not have a rope associated with it will contain a diamond inside it. So look out for those as well. All right, so here, uh, if you actually throw an apple and break that pot, it opens a path down, oops, opens a path down below here, where there is a shopkeeper, but I'm not going to bother with him right now, because I don't have enough diamonds for anything, and I have 9 lives anyway. Alright, so this is a pot without a rope associated with it, and that's why it had a diamond inside it, and I'll get that much needed health, thank you. Oops, 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 oops. I 
love the range of expressions which the genie has. Oh, by the way, this life, I really don't know how to get that life. If someone would care to mention it in the comments, thank you. Oh, all right, very close to dying. One hit away, basically. Oh, come on. Let's throw apples at this guy. Whoa. Okay. Actually, I should have saved that life to get it after dying, which I'm about to die, which I'm about to do right now, I guess. Or pretty soon. Yeah, restarting point. Now, if you go inside here to the left, there is a guard and some extra points to be had. But since I'm so close to dying, I won't bother with that. I think there's a heart here. Yes, thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just be on the lookout for those spots throughout this level. They give you lots of diamonds. And this is the guy, oops, who has, oh shit, he killed me. Well, luckily there's a restarting point right here. But this is the guy who has the second half of the scarab. Uh, he's pretty easy to kill, actually. I shouldn't have uh, died there. So you just have to stand in the correct place and keep slashing him. And we are good. And this is the final challenge in the level. Uh, this guy, you need to throw 10 apples at him. I think you can actually try to do a right running jump and slash him as well, but uh, I've never really uh, killed him in that way. Just once more, and we are done. Loose. All right, change of scenario now. The Sultan's Dungeon. So when I was a kid first playing this game, I think it was in 1999, this level was the first really challenging level where I got stuck for a long time. It's confusing and there are plenty of ways to lose health as well, like these bats for instance are extremely irritating and they will make a comeback in levels 5 and I believe one more level as well, I think it's 6, I'm not sure. And these pink skeletons, like pink skeletons, seriously? But anyway, those guys, uh, what they do is uh, they have a bomb and they love blowing themselves up and scattering all their bones, which can hurt you. So that's their function, a pretty unorthodox way to try to harm a lot, I must say. And these cannonballs, or these uh, cannonballs and chains, uh, those things make a comeback in the last level, as you guys will find out later in this video. Okay, there's a restarting point. Right, so every time I lose a life, I start from uh, 15 apples, sorry, uh, from 10 apples. Uh, there's a shopkeeper here, I'm gonna get a wish from him. We have enough lives for now. I'm not sure where to go here, I think I need to go up. Yep, up it is. This one can be pretty confusing actually. And bats are a constant source of irritation, as I pointed out. Okay, there's a restarting point. Now, as long as you keep getting the restarting points, you know that you're going on the correct track.
I will let that genie head be. Oh damn. Oh damn. Okay. What? Damn. It's like the apple that is landing splat on his face without doing anything to him. Not that apples should be harming human beings at all, but they are doing it to the other gods. So this place, by the way, left of this uh, huge stone column is where he started the level from. Huge brick column, I should say. Sorry. So I'm on the other side now, the side which leads to freedom. And there's a pretty long platforming segment here. Eight bricks in total. Watch it. Okay. Uh, let's try to end this level without losing any more lives. Four diamonds, how nice. Ouch. One hit away, but very close to completion as well. Yep, there we go. Hmm, that was a weird place for the restarting point. Like, just before the level ended. I think the positions of the restarting points also change depending on what difficulty you're in. Alright, this is level 5. It looks pretty beautiful. It's a cave of wonders. And this is the place where, where the magic lamp is. I guess that's what most of you would associate with Aladdin when you first hear the name, like Aladdin and the magic lamp. And lots and lots of bats as well. I kind of like this level. It's challenging, but not overly so. It offers a pretty nice mix of uh, difficulty and intrigue as well, I should say. So these uh, statues, you need to slash them kind of backwards like that. I think that's the only technique which works. And there are ghosts here for some reason. As well as an Abu face, which I took. Alright, so ghosts. Let's get them. For the simplest enemies in the game, to be honest. Uh, I find that if I try to take that harder... Oops, shit, shit, shit. I just end up falling down and damaging myself again on those falling rocks. So might as well not take that. Plenty of statues and treasure to be had. Plenty of bats as well, unfortunately. Uh, these things require four, four apples to get rid of. And they unlock things for you. For example, this tree or whatever that is. I mean, obviously it's not a tree. I would say it's a stalactite and stalagmite joined together. Uh, that thing blocks my path until I destroy that red statue over there. And there's a shopkeeper here. I'll get one life and two wishes. And now this stalactite stalagmite is still there, but I can pass right through it, or in front of it, whatever. It's a question of perspective and it's a 2D game. So, this is one of the most uh, frustrating portions of the game, I should say. Just try to uh, slash this guy right and left, right and left, about, uh, what, 20 times, I believe? Uh, something close to 20 times. Right, so earlier I said that uh, probably the magic lamp is the first thing you'd associate with Aladdin. Uh, I'd like to reframe that to the magic carpet, Aladdin and the magic carpet. And speaking of magic carpets, it makes its first appearance here. There we go. It flies kind of erratically, I should say. Like, as if it doesn't really know, as if it knows where it wants to take me, but it doesn't really know. I was not really sure if it really wants to take me here. Like, it just made me hover over this place for like three or four seconds before dropping me. So what was the point of that? Uh, that section is pretty dangerous, by the way, because those rocks uh, can fall down into the ocean. Into the ocean? No, not ocean. <laughs> into the water body, whatever. Uh, this is a secret path, by the way, because the usual way would be to just go up and keep grabbing these ledges. 
and have those rocks fall on you. But if you just stay on this ledge, then you can go through here and come out on the other side and get the lamp and then the level. Level complete. Up in the cave, I've never got very far on this bonus level to be honest. Like right about now, I don't know how to dodge all those rocks. But I did get three diamonds, so yeah, it's a nice try. Okay, this is one of the hardest levels in the game, the escape. Uh, this basically is a section in the movie where Aladdin touches uh, some of the treasure and the whole cave starts collapsing, I think. <clears throat> so I'm trying to escape. And this level again has pretty nice graphics. Uh, the lava background and the red and all that stuff. And also, uh, you can die pretty easily in this level. There's so much lava, there are these rocks. Uh, these rocks chasing me, by the way, are not uh, insta-kill. But they take away like 80% of my health. So yeah, try not to let them hit you. And there's a fork in the road here, I can go down, which is what I used to do earlier and kill myself repeatedly. Uh, going up is easier to be honest. Wait for that rock to fall and then just run. Run, run, run. Run, rabbit, run. And the carpet comes to my rescue. Yes, the rock hit me, I know. But like I said, I can take one hit. A life, nice. This level, level 7, is... Probably the fan favorite, Rug Ride. These are quarters of an apple, by the way, although they look <laughs> much bigger than the apples themselves. But four of them give me an apple. Not that you will be able to realize that. Because I'm a nine, nine apples. So this level, it's kind of like a smartphone game. Like, follow the hand. Uh, go to where it's telling you to go as things speed up. And the rocks in this level are in stop kill. So I have to basically dodge all the rocks. Uh, even if you die, there are a bunch of lives to be had in this level. So it's not really a big deal and it's fun to play. So if you find yourself dying in this level, well, don't be sad about that. Personally, I feel the most challenging part in this level is when you have the hands pointing both ways because after things speed up more that thing always kind of confuses me and even if I'm like wherever I am I tend to go to the, uh, to the other direction like I did over there which is totally pointless because I, like that, I don't know why I did that but I just do it out of instinct I can perfectly well stay up or stay down and I should be fine okay that was better Okay, so really sped up now. That's it. Question mark is down. Always. The three question marks and all of them mean a downward pointing hand. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, close. Why did I do it? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, shit. Okay, things become fast. And suddenly this feels so slow. Right, but now you can appreciate that. These are quarters of an apple, in case you don't believe me earlier on. I will actually wait. Oh, shit. I thought the life would come from below, and I missed the life. Okay, that was stupid. There's another life to be had here. Yep. So back to nine lives.
Oh shit. That's a bad one. On the whole, there are many more downs than ups, to be honest. Just need less statistic, I guess. By the way, these hands that you can see, you'll see a lot more of these hands in this template. The gold cuff and blue hand in the next level. There we go. That's the end of Rug Ride. Pretty nice level. And then we come to Inside the Lamp, which was my most hated level when I used to play this game as a kid. But it has all sorts of uh, cartoonish things, these balloons for instance, like look at their faces, and springs and hands. Hands are the main thing in this level. So I won't bother with exploring everything, just focus on finishing the level as quickly as I can, because I don't like it at all. This is uh, one of the areas where you can die. So you can die everywhere. This is one of the areas where you can die pretty easily, to be honest. It's hard to miss these jumps and just fall all the way down. But there we go. No, there we don't go. Alright, so that's what I meant about <laughs> dying. I almost died there. Alright, there we go. And here the little game of uh, relative velocity which I'm playing. Balloon's moving left, I'm moving right. But it's pretty easy. Uh, you just have to uh, kind of apply the right amount of power on the right key as you jump. And these things just treat me as a marble. I get a couple of wishes. There's a life if I if I decide to continue to the left. I don't need lives right now. This part is fun. Boing, boing, boing. More boing. Rest. But if you really take the time to explore this level, uh, it does have a lot of uh, treasure in it, I think. Like a lot of, uh, not exactly secret areas, just areas where you don't have to go to finish the level. Extra places to explore, I should say. There's one particular jump in this level which made me really hate this whole level, and that's coming right at the very end. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Shit, okay, that was the jump. So that very small hand, that was the jump. Yeah, it's actually shorter than I remember, this whole level. Oh no. 
oh no, just wait for everything to become big. Wait, am I? Oh, right. The pattern doesn't change. I think the pattern changes if we lose a life, but at the same life, I don't think the pattern changes. Because last time, all three of them were big. This is the jump. No! Missed it again. Yep, that's why I don't like this level. It's really easy to die. But I still have seven lives, so I shouldn't really be complaining. What? Okay, seriously messing things up over here. Can't really afford to lose more lives. Although there will be a shopkeeper in level 9, the one coming up, and level 11 as well, the final level. But I need a few lives for level 11, uh, for facing Jaffa. Okay, that's a much more friendly pattern of hands. Alright, let's be... Let's be careful this time. And just keep slithering till I know that I'm on a rest area. I mean, what are these things? These red things with yellow flute kind of things sticking out of them. They look like hunks of meat from one angle. Okay, let's do this. There we go. No, hold on. I would like to get that light. How do I get that light? Like that, okay, great. And how do I get that? Okay, wait, hold on. Why can't I get this light? Yes, there we go. Two lights, excellent. Perhaps get a third? Yep, okay, back to nine lives. Great. Sultan's Palace, huge change in scenario here. Uh, this first part can be tricky actually. It can take away a lot of your health, mainly these fish which pop out of the water. Uh, they aren't here yet, but they will be coming soon enough. Yeah, those fish. Where's the bird? Oh, what's it? Damn! Damn! Whoa, just made it, or I might still lose health while I'm on the carpet, it becomes erratically, like I said. No! Oh! Damn, I should have just jumped over there. Anyway, now I have 10 apples, which is not the ideal number. And those fish are back. So those fish only come in uh, normal and hard mode. I think that's why I don't really remember them because I used to play in easy mode as a kid. Okay. Let's just hop down here. There's a heart which I'm hungry for right now. Uh, let's try not to die to this guy. Be extra careful. Resetting point, awesome. Okay, now I can die in peace. You have to keep slashing while you're on the carpet because sometimes it takes you, like it almost impales you on the swords of enemies and makes you touch all these birds and stuff, all of which hurt you. Um, long fall here, where I missed the heart. The one thing that I really needed. But yeah, this is pretty grand, the Sultan's Palace after all. Uh, 
Uh, let's pop it down again. There's a heart there which I will let go. Or okay, thank you, carpet. What is it doing with me? Come on, just just get me somewhere. Yes, finally. Whoa. Okay. Visa, nice. I don't like these guys. Alright, let's free Abu. If we don't free Abu, you cannot finish the level. Get a couple of lives. And get a wish. Did I? Yeah, there we go. And that's the end of the Sultan's Palace. We are coming to the end of the game. There's one really short level right now, Jaffer's Quarters, where you have to make his bird Iago do that thing, whatever he's doing over there, I think four times. I'm not sure what that is on top there, like some kind of brains or something, but just, uh, just keep slashing Iago and you should be fine. Uh, you can't do anything with the brain. There we go. That's the end of the level. Shortest level in the whole game, even shorter than the first bonus level, I would say. Jaffar's Palace. Last level. Level 11. Uh, I would highly recommend following the top path here instead of being down there because of those flames which keep licking the ground. Those things. And it's very easy to die in this level, quite obviously, because it's the last level. So watch your step all the time. Again, go up top. And these cannonballs need to come back. Ouch. And for some reason, fire comes out of that platform as soon as you step on it. Uh, there was a shopkeeper down there, by the way. I'm not going to use him right now. I don't need him. But I guess I'm about to lose a life, in which case I'll need him soon enough. Watch out for these birds. They can kill you pretty easily. Oh no, I died. Alright, now I think I actually might have use for this uh, shopkeeper. Let's get a life. And get back to the carpet. Again, there are several places to go where I'm not going. Uh, one big reason is that many of those places just, uh, just proud flames from the ground as soon as you step on them. Alright, this is the final segment.
that's a final beach starting point. And this is the carpet, which will take me all the way to Yunabu. Keep slashing, keep slashing, keep slashing. Uh, I guess there could be smarter ways to face Jaffa, uh, particularly his uh, second phase, which I'm... Alright, uh, let's leave with that when we come to it. But uh, I, I kind of kill Jaffa in the tedious way. No, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. So apples don't hurt him. Uh, in the first phase, you just have to uh, slash him when he's uh, standing still and not trying to attract you with that magic stick of his. Shit. Okay, there was one more life. Yeah, Jaffa takes up a lot of lives. At least when I face him, like I said, I don't have any very smart way to beat him. If you do know, please mention it in the comments. But the way I do him is like I kind of struggle really. I lose uh, several lives, mainly in the second phase of Jaffa. I usually do the first phase better. Uh, I'm not playing that well right now. Oh, come on, come on, stop doing that. But I think I'm pretty close to the uh, second phase. Playing really badly, playing really badly. Oh, by the way, uh, I noticed that the score has stuck at 99990, as I said. Generally, that happens a lot earlier if I lose lives in the early levels and I just play parts of the game again and collect treasure again. So it sticks at 99990. Snake? No, not yet? Okay. Alright, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. Finally! So I might have noticed in the fleeting fraction of a second before he died that Jaffa's form changed and he's turned into a hideous snake. And that's what I'm dealing with right now. Now while facing the snake, I find the best thing which works for me is to just stand in front of it, take damage. But if I try to jump, I'll just land on that platform and get hurt. Or I guess I could do it like this, but he's kind of really hard to dodge. And I generally find it easier to just keep on slashing at him and taking damage. That way I find that uh, the net amount of damage I can do to him per life of mine which is lost is more. And I should be able to kill him in the life after this one. Drop me, come on, just drop me. Snake time again. Uh, just slash him as as hard as you can. Uh, if you don't have enough lives when you come to face Jaffa, you'll be forced to innovate and think of, uh, I guess, uh, smarter techniques. But unless you are extremely good at dodging and you know exactly how to jump so as to dodge the fires from the platforms up, up above as well, unless you're that, I would say this actually is the best way to kill Jaffa. Yes, you are dying. But you can do a lot of damage to him for life lost. I mean, it's not really a fair battle. It's almost it's almost impossible to dodge flames from uh, everywhere. So yeah, uh, just keep slashing. Uh, and if you see those uh, those small blue kind of uh, blue things which are coming out from his body as you slash him, that means you are doing damage to him. Because there's no damage meter on Jaffer, and there are no other bosses in the game. He's pretty much the only boss. 
So uh, that is the only visual indicator that you're doing damage to Jaffa and you're progressing. All right. So hopefully this will be the life where I finally kill him, kill this snake. Come on, get more shots at him. Yeah. Keep slashing, keep slashing. Okay, still no. <laughs> this is turning out to be very tricky. I mean, I'm still confident of being able to beat him. I still have two lives left. And I'd better do so because, because if I have to activate a continue, I'll be starting with just one life, and then I don't see any way in which I can beat him. So just slash away, slash away, slash away. There we go. All done. Level complete. A bit nerve wracking in the end, but also then as well. I'll have another princess go flying on the magic carpet. The end. Smooch, smooch, smooch. Alright, guys, hope you enjoyed this game. Released in November 1992, Disney's Aladdin, playable on DOS. It originally came in a floppy disk, I believe. Uh, there was a CD released as well, which had some nice music and some other cool features. Wait, it says 1994? But I think I checked on Google that it was 1992. Anyway, program-based spontaneous confusion. But I'll end the video here. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.